Hello my friends and welcome back. We are hot off the heels of a pretty solid result in the soaking wet race at the Red Bull Ring in Austria. But now we get to head to another pretty typically rainy spot. Our constructor's home GP at Silverstone in Great Britain. So let's pop into the garage, take a peek at our messages, get our weekend and our weather forecast previews down. And we got a, an overcast and cloudy qualifying, but as you can see right there, Mixed conditions during the race, starts dry, wet in the middle for the large, largest portion of the race, and then a dry finish. Now we've already completed one of our uh, team objectives of scoring two points with that last finish. We picked up eight, so good solid, solid development. Now we're going to take a peek into the R&D chart, and uh, once again we appear to have, you know, a bug kind of crop up on us. Um, last week we selected the bottom middle uh, arrow upgrade, the uh, brake duct upgrade, and for some reason, no pro progress was made on it. So, it's just like how when we selected a, uh, a durability upgrade earlier in the season, something happened with that. Something else kind of fishy has gone on. But, as you can see, we'll be plateaued again. Uh, Toro Rosso has made a little bit of a jump up. They're improving, so we're still kind of technically last, but we're going to go ahead and... Uh, do some uh do some maintenance on our pretty worn out engine components as we really struggled with a lot of issues throughout uh, last week's race. So we are going to keep a couple of these slightly more worn ones on um, throughout the practice sessions and do the final swap outs um, right before we would need to take any kind of engine or uh, component penalties. We're definitely going to be taking a new gearbox though. Um, that gearbox is pretty much toast from the last race so we will be taking a five place grid penalty this week um so our goal luckily um silverstone is another one of those tracks that uh that i'm a fan of and really enjoy driving at um so i feel pretty confident in my my qualifying abilities i'll definitely be able to out qualify the car so i want to really try and put it as high up the field as i can before we take that penalty but let's jump to quality Here we are then, waiting for the green lights to get qualifying underway for the British Grand Prix. Drivers tend to complain about tyre wear around this track and the compounds on offer this weekend aren't likely to put that issue to bed. Is this going to be about who can make the tyres last? Tire wear is always something you have to consider to a certain degree. Finding a good car balance that suits the circuit will help prolong the life of the tire, but it's true that some circuits, such as this one, are more challenging than others. How hard you can push them depends on your strategy and how tight the battle is around you. Sit rep, we've got a leak in the hydraulic system, so it's going to be a few minutes before we can get you out on track. So there we go, right away we have issues. The track is pretty quiet at the moment, perhaps we should get out there and get and a And literally like in. a minute and a half in, you can see it's still in the repair settings. Jeff wants me to go out and do some laps. Jeff, you're still fixing the car. But, sun comes out a little bit, track warms up once we're finally repaired, so we are going to hop out um, for flying lap number two. We kind of had to abort the first lap, it wasn't a great, uh, great run out, but you'll take a little tour around the circuit, the likely flat out first corner, long sweeping left hander. The slow section here um, is a definite hot spot for action. Tough to get right, uh, that lock up you can see sent me a little wide. But we are about to head down one of the several long straights on this track. We could DRS those. Definitely a high-speed track, but has some good technical, technical corners to make up some ground in as well. Now we're in through the long sweeping left-hander and then right-hander Brooklyn's is the left-hander. But then the right-hander, we're gonna swing down the next straight, the old start-finish straight before the uh, track was reset up. Now, some cars uh, nowadays on the track are able to take that flat out, but we don't quite have the downforce to really push it that aggressively. And we're through um, the famous corner set, Maggots and Beckets, which um, 
After the hairpin section at CODA, Circuit of the Americas in Austin, Texas actually took inspiration from the, this famous sector of corners when designing that track. But here we are through Stowe, another high speed right hander into a heavy braking zone for another chicane here. And we get ready to straighten the car out to cross the line and uh, put up a time. We go P6 right there. Pretty solid run, but we hop out one more time um, towards the end of the session. Flying lap number three on the board. We'll see what kind of improvements we can make as we uh, rumble our way through the next couple of corners. We're about a half a second up. And we are going to improve by about four, a little over four tenths, but we go our P4 in the session right now. And as the uh, timer winds down and the qualifying one ends, we go P5. So we feel pretty good so far. But we're going to go ahead and jump to Q2 and then uh, again lap two because the uh, first lap we kind of were just getting the tires warmed up and you can see we're already improving on that lap one time. We're almost a full second up um, with a good late braking zone there and a little slower getting on the throttle but still a good seven tenths upgrade and that was on the medium tires so felt pretty good about that. Felt pretty good about that indeed. But we are in the dangerous drop zone, so we threw on the softs to go out right before the end. So we are P5 and through to Q3. And here we go, our Q3 lap, just trying to see where we can put ourselves on the grid. P5 before our last lap, we go again. We're sitting P3 right now, with qualifying and as the last couple of cars cross the line, we go Hamilton, P5, Gasly, so we will be likely, barring Goodbye any other then, uh, penalties from really other teams, we will be started. starting with our 5th sure place grid again, penalty, um, should be P10. The pain of parting is nothing to the joy of meeting again. And how joyous indeed it is to be back at Silverstone once more for the British Grand Prix. The queues to get in this morning extended miles back down the A43, such as the enthusiasm for Formula One in this country. The 3.6 mile long Silverstone circuit is one of the longest of the season with 18 corners in the current layout. With average lap speeds reaching around 145 miles per hour, it's also one of the quickest tracks of the year. Watch out for cars taking the right-handers of Abbey and Cops flat out. With the Grand Prix nearly upon us, Anthony Davidson is by my side once again to offer his perspective. Before we begin, let's take a quick look at the grid lineup for today's race. Lewis Hamilton lines up on pole position with Pierre Gasly alongside. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Verstappen, Leclerc, Valtteri Bottas, and Perez, Magnussen. Raikkonen, Oldtimer, and Sebastian Vettel, Weber, Norris, Carlos Sainz, and Grosjean, Hülkenberg, Ricardo. They'll be starting further back after an earlier grid penalty. Alexander Albon and Lance Stroll, Butler, and George Russell ends our grid lineup. And with preparations almost complete, let's head down to the track. some points on the board let's continue this form and aim for another top 10 finish all right so we are starting p9 on the grid not exactly where we wanted to be but that uh gearbox penalty definitely uh, pushed us back but we have a pretty solid pace on this track and so we're going to take a look at our pit strategy to see what we can make of um obviously starting on the soft tires we'll basically run this soft um should have plenty of life in it uh, to run it until the rain comes and then we will uh, play it by ear um, after that. So we are behind Perez Magnuson. We've got five red lights up, lights out, and away we go. We are off to a little bit of a slower start. Wheel spin, and we have to kind of save the car from uh, going around. But we stick to the outside, keep that position around uh, Sebastian Vettel, and we're going to go ahead and dive down the inside of uh, Kimi Raikkonen. We catch a little bit of a warning for contact with Vettel, even though he's the one who initiated it in that sense. And then over through the next corner, we dive down the inside of K-Mag. And so we are up two spots now uh, at the start of this race in seventh. 
And we're going to try and grab a little bit of a toe off of Sergio Perez here and uh, catch up with this group of uh, leading cars that are, you know, we're up a lot higher than we think. We go carry a little too much speed there into the, the right-hander after Brooklyn's. Um, and so we have to kind of go wide and back out of it. Not a great run, but we're still able to, uh, to keep in contact. Now, not really a spot where we're going to be able to make a run or a pass through that corner. We really uh, have to kind of settle in through this sequence. Magus and Beckett's is a, you know, very, very fast S section. So it's more of a holding station with the car you're following to get a good run uh, down this DRS straight uh, later in the race. Now it's tough. We're going to go for it using just slipstream and engine mode because we're being ballsy today. And we uh, go a little wide and hold Perez off around the outside, but we get that move done and we're down into the chicane to get ready to finish up our first lap. But yeah, I hadn't turned the ERS down, so we uh, hit our deployment cap that lap, but no harm, no foul. And so we will continue down into lap two here. A little bit of wheel spin on the exit there. Um, basically, I can push these tires as hard as I want because the rain will, should be coming before before the end of life of these tires. So I, I gambled on, let me see how hard I can run it early. I didn't want to gamble on rain not arriving because, well, it's England. And, the rain's going to come, let's be honest. The, the rain's coming. Now we do have a, uh, we did start ourselves a little short on fuel, about a half a lap short, so we are going to have to make that up in different points of the race. So we all will, um, depending on our position, be running in some lean mixtures or doing some lift and coast. But right now in the heavier fuel loads, the amount that we're having to lift through maggots and beckets gets us, you know, about 200 to the lap. And we lose it back on the next straight, so we we net positive a little bit, even running pretty hard. And there you go, you can see the first raindrops starting to fall just two laps into this race. So depending on how aggressively the uh, rain starts to come on, sometimes it takes a few laps for the track to get wet, other times it can really just start pouring. That'll be our, our plan, so... On the formation lap of this race, we we already set our strategy um, to go to Inters. Basically, the next stop, I told him to put the Inters on, so that way we don't have to worry about Jeff messaging us with a uh, change of strategy, and then having or having to worry about um, switching from the medium to the Inters. After that, just as soon as I'm ready for it, I call for the box and dive in for it, but. Here we are, we're defending into Brooklyn's there, uh, trying to keep Sergio Perez behind us. You can definitely feel the, the track getting slicker and slicker. Oh yeah, this he's trying to tell us uh, to stay on the drives. I think just the amount that we're having to lift and, and how fast the track has gotten wet through this first part of the, the lap, it's time to dive in and, and get more. You can actually see part of it in in my fuel, uh, my fuel target, we lost a lot of ground because of the amount of wheel spin we were getting. It's, you know, wasted fuel spinning up the tires and not creating any acceleration. So we, we went from a, from 0.48 short to a 0.53 as the track got wet. So here we go. We are going to go ahead and be the first in the pit lane. We're going to try and uh, position ourselves well based on strategy alone. So we came in sitting P5, P6. As we battled up with uh, Perez there. We are going to be the first on track with the Inters. And if the track is getting as wet as I feel it is, we actually might make some ground up by the time other, other teams come into pit. But it's a gamble at this point. It is a complete gamble, and the other part of it is I'm just not as comfortable running slicks in these slightly damp conditions. It's not something I've had a lot of practice with yet. So, you know, I'd rather have uh, 
go on to the to the wets. But here we are coming down our next lap, and you can see us side by side with Vettel, who we who was right behind us. This group of uh, cars has all fit their inters. They've all come out on track. Valtteri Bottas right in front of us as well. So we've kind of slotted back into a, a similar battle to where we were at. So no real uh, time gained or lost um, through the strategy, which I'll take over losing time. But there's Vettel diving the inside of us. We have to kind of hang it out around the outside, which is even more sketchy on a wet tire because you get off the uh, racing line. And there's not as much grip when the, uh, these wet tires start to clear a bit of a, a dry line to work with. So whenever you have to kind of hang around the outside to keep a car off, you're, you're not only giving up the inside of the corner, but you're also losing traction from that slightly drier line. But we are five laps into this 26 lap race here and Lorraine is uh, coming down on us. And we are... Um, Looks like a few cars still have not come in yet. Um, we are running P11 at the moment, so I'm sure there are some cars that are going to drop back on this next pit cycle. But there's Vettel with another run on us into Stowe this time. And again, we are trying to hang it out around the outside. We managed to just keep ourselves on the track around the curbing, and we are clean into the braking zone, and we uh, hold him off. You see the rain coming down on that nice low camera off the front wing, but he is still right behind us. And uh, for a high speed track that has a lot of normally flat out corners and a lot of uh, traction zones where you're putting a lot of, you're relying on the downforce to uh, keep the tires gripped up, it's very hard to uh, get on the throttle and drive a track. You drive it very carefully. Another, another big bout of wheel spin as we're trying to get on the throttle. That's going to cost us. You're doing well out there. Keep it up. We're looking at about 10 more minutes about of 10, rain. About 10, 10 minutes. more minutes of rain, according to Jeff. So, be about half, almost a good eight, almost nine laps-ish. Um, depending on how long it actually goes. So, I thought the rain was going to go a little longer. Honestly, I was expecting it to be uh, up until the late, last teensy stages but uh, the sooner it dries out the happier I will be because I definitely have definitely had good pace this weekend uh, in both practicing qualifying on the dry tires the wets you know are a struggle for me um, as you can see P6 right now basically where we were before the uh, pit stop cycles all started but we are being absolutely hounded by Seb and this time he is going to look again down the inside of Stowe, but he's going to tuck in. We had already positioned ourselves to uh, cover that outside if he was going to dive in there, so I didn't have a chance really to adjust. But the uh, Mercedes of uh, Mercedes of Valtteri Bottas is getting away from us a little bit right now. You're coming up to one of the Mercedes cars. The gap to the car ahead is four. Coming up to the... Jeff, I'm losing like a second a lap to him. I was right behind him two laps ago, and now I'm four and a half back. Coming up to... Well, I guess technically, yeah, he's next, but I don't think I'm going to be coming up and catching the, catching the Mercedes there, you know? So you can see we've got a bit of a train forming up behind us. Yes, Jeff, I know I need to save fuel. Stop pounding me about it. All right, and here we are, jumped ahead to lap 15. The rain has stopped. Vettel is still on our tail, and the tires are starting to get a little worn as they're starting to get heated up. The temperature is pretty high. They want me to box this lap, but they wanted me to uh, change on to enters. And I just, I don't think the track is quite quite dry yet enough um, for dries, but I don't want to go in and, you know, get another set of inners. And even still, you know, Vettel stuck his nose down the inside. It would have been real tough to get across to the pit lane. Anyhow, so we decide to stay out one more lap until this track is really dry. It's, it's not ideal. Because I think the track is, I think the, the tires are obviously very worn. We're getting very slidey on them. And uh, 
the track still isn't quite dry enough for for dry so we're very much caught between a rock and a hard place um, I instead of running the inters one more lap after this I think I'm gonna come in and run just gamble on the dries and see if I can make if I can make a make a lap on the, on the dry mediums on the sweater conditions and not lose too much time because the way that these inters are feeling right now there's and there's just not a lot of grip left in them either. But we're definitely losing ground to the car in front of us. The Ferrari and Mercedes group is uh, way out ahead. Vettel is still caught up in our little train here. And we're really not letting him through. But Magnussen now has uh, made it through him and caught up. I think Vettel might be having some issues. Here we are finishing off Maggots and Beckets. Getting ready to come down the long straight into Stowe. This time diving in to grab a new set of dry tires and see if we can't make up some ground um, in the slightly damp conditions. You can see with the fuel mix, we're, we're, we're positive. We're, we're in the green targets again. We were able to run a lot of the uh, the wet laps in the lean fuel mixture to make up that gap because we were we weren't going to be keeping up with the Mercedes in front of us and we had no real tough issues keeping the team behind so I just wanted to check there make sure the medium tires are what's going to be going on those should take me to the end of the race strategy wise so here we are in on and out we go nice 2.0 second pit stop good clean run and we are going to pull out one more time and uh these will be the tires that take us to the end of the race and you can see us a uh, little bit of swerviness as the tires spin up as we're trying to get on the throttle to get on track and here we go, we're going to jump ahead to lap 18. You can see everybody else. Well, I guess 19 is across the You can see a lot of other cars diving into the pits now, putting the dries on. A lot of these guys, though, they went since they went a little longer, they went on to the softs, and I'm still sliding around. It's The track is almost to that, that state. The outlap on the, on the cold mediums was just brutal. Like we lost, lost a good chunk of time, but... Now we're battling with uh, with Hulkenberg. Uh, Magnussen looks to be a good couple of seconds ahead of us. So we definitely lost ground by going to the mediums that early. But, you know, it was just kind of a cascade effect. We went on to the uh, inters. We were the first car onto the inters when the rain started. So we had the most worn inters by the time the rain stopped. And it was either a matter of diving in for another set of inters or pushing a very worn set of inters another lap to get on to dries a little early. So the gamble of jumping uh, jumping on those inters early doesn't really look to have, uh, have paid off um, strategy-wise, but like I was saying, this weekend we've had very good pace on the dries, and as this track dries out more and more, I think we're really going to really gonna shine um, and be able to outdrive a lot of these are the cars even the cars on the, the softer faster tire I think we're gonna be able to uh, to handle me we almost made we almost made Q3 on our uh, on our medium set in Q2 we were just one position short and after looking at the uh, the times and that we were only a we were less than a tenth off by making it with our mediums it's really we only had to go to the softs to, to make it up but another couple cars dive into the pit lane there we are now up to P12 and we are starting to gain on the back of Hulkenberg. And it looks like Albon, I believe. It's either Albon or Butler ahead. I'm not sure yet. For points. So again, with well, with our team, we're just trying to score points. We're trying to continue. We're trying to be in the points every week now. I don't want to... Where the car where the car's performing and the amount of upgrades we've made, I think... Points is now the goal every week rather than just, you know, being out of the bottom five. We definitely have a pay, especially at tracks that suit us. We can definitely, uh, definitely make up some good ground here. But you can see 
every time through each corner we're able to go a little faster as the track is drying up pretty quick. We are on lap 20. We've got about six laps left to go as we get ready to jump down the back straight, grab some DRS, and uh, head into Stowe. We get a pretty good run off the corner. We've got good tow DRS, so we're going to go ahead and from way back make a nice move down the inside of Hulkenberg, and it is Alex Albon in front of us. And so here we go. Time to chase that group down as well. It is Albon and our buddy Sergio Perez, who we were battling with at the start of this race. A little bit of oversteer there coming out of the final corner. I have to kind of save it onto the grass, but we're going to go ahead and jump ahead. Lap 23, we've caught up with Albon and Perez, and... Luckily, uh, they're battling now. It's also kind of helping us out. It's lap 23 here. The move on Perez will be for points if we can get there. So, a little bit of a looseness to that corner, but we're going to go ahead and set ourselves up to go down the inside of this braking zone. A little bit of wheel-to-wheel -wheel action there, but we managed to get that job done and get through, and now we are about to be heading down another DRS straight with Alex Albon right in front of us. So we get, have a good run coming. We're gonna go ahead and look to the inside on Brooklyn's there. We're gonna kind of uh, nudge him a little wide as we uh, slide through. You can see the track getting ever drier. We've set a purple first sector, fastest in the session through that first sector for now. But I'm sure uh, some of the leaders coming through behind us will definitely uh, take over that from me, but we definitely have very good pace, um, and here we go, through Cops, into Maggots and Beckett's. We've got about, we've got three laps left to go, and we've got the orange dot of Lando Norris a good ways up the road there. Let's see what his gap is at the split. We are at yeah, 4.3 behind. Not likely we'll catch that group. But Albon goes around the outside of us, uh, trying to get that position back to us. Still hanging it out around the outside, wheel to wheel through now a third corner. He gets later on the brakes into the left-hander of the chicane, but we're able to get it back and seal it off on the right-hander. And you see we've got a nice tight train, a lot of a uh, lot of tow for those back cars, and I'm kind of dragging them along right now. So unless I can make up some big ground in the next couple of corners I'm gonna be in danger uh, in the next DRS zone they are gonna absolutely be able to get a good solid run on me there we go, Perez with the DRS easily by us as we head into Brooklyn's we're trying to set ourselves up wide for the switch pack but Albon puts his nose down in there and it's not as easy we weren't able to dive back to the apex because we had to leave him room so a bit of a strategy miss um, for myself right there wasn't the best move but we are in the dirty air of Perez through cuffs there and that is a tough corner to make when the, uh, when the front tires just didn't want to stick down so we're going to try and get a good run through Maggots and Beckett's here to get a strong run down the back straight into Stowe. We have a pretty solid run there. And we are diving down the inside and easily by him this time, well before the braking zone even. We cut across, get onto the racing line, don't have to do anything special there. And here we go, about to come through the final corner to start our final lap of this race. This is your final lap, final lap of so race. now it's a matter of surviving the next couple of DRS zones as Lando is still way, way out ahead of us. So this left-hander here is deceptive. It's, it tightens towards the exit, but it's very important to set up the next two corners in order to get down this straight well, which we do, and open up a good solid gap to uh, to Perez behind us. So even though he had DRS, it wasn't enough for him to really catch up and make a good run on us. We're a little slow through that corner. Um, we go a little bit wide through the right-hander. You can see Mercedes once again taking the top step of the podium. 
and we got yellow flags ahead, and you can see on the mini map, slow dot, Lando Norris, and smoke out the back of the car. We just need to make sure we get through him cleanly. Unfortunately, the uh, train behind us uh, caught him right as he was getting to the corners before he could pull off and has really held them up. So it's good for me. I don't have to worry about them attacking me in the last couple of corners. And an unexpected extra position, some extra points. We were uh, about to be happy with just ninth and the couple of points that that entails. But moving up to eighth is, uh, makes it a decent haul for a team that started dead last on the grid so here we go through the final corner and across the line to finish the race p8 nice work he did well today i think the boss will be happy with that one that's it for another grand prix and a fantastic win for mercedes anthony davidson how do you think they were able to set themselves apart today well, tyre management probably played quite a large role in the outcome of this one. As ever, it's not just about speed, it's all about maintaining that speed consistently over a stint, over a race distance. So being able to keep up the lap times while still being smooth on the controls and gentle on the tyres, that's really where the race was won today. And I can see the drivers starting to approach the podium for the victory celebrations. A real team victory today, everybody played their part. Congratulations then to Mercedes, your race winners today. So the uh, third place, uh, decent points haul for our uh, championship leader, Lewis Hamilton. Mercedes continues to build their lead in the Constructors' Championship, but uh, no Ferraris on the podium this week. It was the Red Bull of Pierre Gasly taking second and splitting the Mercedes. And after this round of the World Championship, Here's how things look in the driver's table. Not the result our points leader wanted, but it certainly makes things interesting going forward. Let's focus on the driver of the day. Anthony Davidson, who do you pick? It's an interesting one today. On balance, I think I have to call out Alexander Albon, a really solid drive from him today, and one that he and his team should be proud of. It's time to check out the constructors' standings. Mercedes continue to extend their lead. Meanwhile, a strong weekend from Red Bull this time out, and they improve their position in the championship. And with that, we wrap up another weekend of motorsport. But with more races lined up, be sure to join us when we come back with more Formula One. All in all, a pretty solid uh, weekend, as you can see here on the championship table now. We're still 11th. We actually drop a little bit to Haas this week because of uh, both Haas' scored points, only I scored points um, for our team this week. But, you know, moved up one position um, throughout the race there. Um, basically, the DNF of Lando Norris is what kept us out. Really got stuck between a rock and a hard place um, as far as strategy went, but it was definitely a gamble. Great work out there today. Let's have your thoughts. How do you feel the weather affected the outcome today? Oh, it changed strategies, but the uh, top driver still performed the best. I mean, it was Do you have any fly. comments about the collisions? I'm not going to comment on that because it only makes my team mad because either my aero or chassis department and uh, it was just well, Rubbin's racing. Thanks anyway. Sorry, Claire. I wish with the collisions one there was an actual, actual option that didn't negatively affect your team. You can say, oh, it's, you know, I missed some apexes or something like that. But no, everything you can select other than no comment makes your team angry. But a good solid haul of points there. Now we're sitting on just over 3,000 uh, R&D points because apparently it didn't take us clicking the one last week. So... We've got a good amount of points to uh, spend, and I mean, we're still log jammed with it all being majors, but we are going to have a bunch of majors, I guess, Excellent arrive all at today. the same time now Finishes because like we're going to be able to purchase a few. Reviews. On to the next one. Let's see, Carl. I think the car has a bit more to give. Can't let up on R&D. I'm trying to not let up on R&D developments, Carl. But yeah, I think if it was a it was a completely dry race at Silverstone, we probably could have ran best of the rest. We definitely would have beaten the, uh, the Haas. I think we could have been just behind the uh, the Ferrari, Mercedes, Red Bull crew. 
But so here we are, 3,300 points in the R&D chart. Let's take a peek and see what we can get after. We'll definitely, uh, definitely go after that brake duct upgrade again. We have a, we have a good engine on the on the grid, but our our drag is really what holds us back from competing in a straight line with a with a with the Mercedes, with the Ferrari, with the uh, and even with the Racing Points. Um, they tend to be. This weekend we got a little better in a straight line against the Racing Points. At least we were able to uh, to keep up with them in that regard, but. Uh, Arrow is really where we're the furthest behind, so I'm again not really worrying too much about what uh, about what the engine can do. Um, it's really going to continue to be this arrow and chassis upgrade. So we're just kind of seeing what we want to do on the chassis side. They're both engine cover uh, changes. One is a weight reduction, the other is a weight redistribution. And you can see there we've got a. Um, the major upgrades you can the uh, squares there you can see our two week development times yeah I took a peek to see what what impact the uh, the engine will do but I mean we're still right up there with our with Mercedes engine wise so we're gonna go ahead and purchase another front down for us we're trying to trying to get trying to get the front end to stick down the cars are still very understeery um, and I would prefer if they were a little more oversteer, I can modulate the throttle a little more and, and cover it in that regard rather than having a car that just won't turn in. So we're trying to get the the uh, arrow to a place that really allows the car to be driven hard and pushed. Because right now, with with the way it understeers, as far as you know, the front wheels breaking off first as opposed to the back end trying to come around. If you really try to push it into a corner, you just can't really get the car into the corner. And so that's what we're trying to uh, to do with setups and with our, our upgrades to get that front end more, much more planted. But there you have it. Our home GP, I'd say pretty good, pretty solid race at our home GP. Happy with what we did there. Um, but next we will be continuing this European swing. We're about halfway through the season now. 10, 10 of the 21 races. But I will see you guys in Germany next. See you guys later. Peace.